Hey everyone, Sheldon here, and you can probably tell that this video is a little bit different than the videos I usually do. Normally, I'm over at the workstation, but for this one, I'm actually at the drafting table. I'm making this video just to show you guys some of the things that I do when I'm creating, you know, a blueprint or a template or something like that. Now, I'm sure you guys recognize this stack of paper here, you know, the paper full-size dual-action hidden blade. I'm going to be using this blueprint. This is a sliding component for the hidden blade, which makes the slider work and pull the blade forward and all that stuff. But I'm going to be using this as an example because I figured it's a small part and it's relatively simple. So I'm just going to show you sort of how a blueprint works. Now here's the actual sliding component piece right here. Now for this blueprint image in particular, this is considered to be the front view because it describes the most information about this part. As you can see, this is one-to-one -one scale, so it just fits right over it just like that. Everything is the correct size. Now if I were to take this and turn it over like this, this lines up perfectly right there because this is considered to be the right side view. If you were to take this piece and just turn it like this, that's the right side view based on what you consider to be the front. The same can be said for the top view. If you were to just take this from its original position and just turn it like this, it would line up perfectly with the blueprint. People usually call this an orthographic drawing because you're taking a three-dimensional object and representing it on a two-dimensional surface. So, you know, you're drawing it in two dimensions. You don't use any depth, you don't use any perspective, it's just how it really is. So this is a finished sketch for a piece that you'd be making. Now you may be wondering, well, how do you find out how long everything needs to be? How do you find out the correct size for this piece to actually work? Well, that is where sketching comes in. Before you do a final drawing like this, you should always do multiple sketches. These are a few sketches, not necessarily of the sliding component, but you can see they're usually super messy, and that's okay. They're actually supposed to be messy if they're just sketches. They actually say you shouldn't use a ruler, because that limits what you're thinking. It doesn't really allow you to think outside the box because you're limited by a straight line that can't be modified at all, you know. It's best to just sketch. Don't even worry about anything. All right, so let's say you want an angle here and you want this part to be 90 degrees, this part to be long, and a hook. Well, you start off by just drawing some basic lines. And remember, sketches are supposed to be super messy. Don't worry about it. I usually start off with some basic perspective lines because the orthographic stuff, it works, but I like to have a three-dimensional representation first. People usually start off with a box or something like this and work their way in on these edges to find the shape that they want. So let's say you want this side to be a little bit shorter and this is where you want the angle to be. So you want it to start maybe somewhere around there. So you would connect these lines and it's pretty much just whatever is going on in your head. There is definitely no right way of doing this. So obviously since I've built this piece and everything like that, I'm pretty familiar with it, but when you're first starting off, it might be a little bit more challenging to figure out how everything's going to fit. So you just work your way around, grab all the reference that you can, and this paper is taped down, so I don't really rotate it that much if I'm doing it like this. And then of course, the hook. And this is how I would do it, you know, just a little square sort of thing that you would see through it and then go through the center on the bottom and work it out like this. And then you can erase some of the earlier lines that you don't want anymore. And you have a rough shape of what you want. You can add some shading too if you want it to look a little bit more straightforward. Now, 
On the hidden blade, there's a little wall right here that this basically slides over like this. So that's like a super basic sketch and I did a bunch of these before I actually created this part because I wanted to make sure it would work. Try to write down notes as you go, you know, there is no limitation for sketches. So, you know, if you want this wall to be one hundred thousandths of an inch, so you're sort of working it around these other parts and these other dimensions until everything fits the way it should. So you'll work out all the stuff like this, and if you already have some of the parts built, it makes it a lot more simple. This would be something you'd probably build later in the process. After all that stuff, you're probably going to be able to establish which side you want to be the front and the top and the right or however many views you need to fully describe the object. So you can look at it and say, okay, well I want this one to be the front. So it's going to be sort of a shape like this. And of course, it can be a little bit more complex if it's a more complex shape. So you know, the top view, you would just transfer everything over. And remember, there's no depth really involved, so it's just a flat image, and you just sort of transfer it up here. So that's all basically figured out, and you have the basic shape, so after you do a bunch of sketches, you'll be able to finally create a finished drawing like this. I might go more in depth with stuff like this, and the views, and the orthographic drawing, and stuff like that, if you guys want me to. But I'm not sure how many of you guys would actually be interested in that. So, I don't even know how many of you are actually still watching this video. So, if you are still watching this video, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, so after you have a sketch like this, you know, I usually date it and stuff like that just to keep it around and have some reference, but now you can actually start working on the actual drawing. So this is one of the drafting tools that I use. It's a drafting T-square and it really helps a lot because it helps you line up the paper and make it completely horizontal and it actually helps with vertical lines and you'll see how that works in a little bit so basically it just lines up and you use some tape to hold it down make sure the tape isn't super sticky there's nothing worse than finishing a drawing and then taking it off and it just tears in half it's just the worst so now I'm just going to show you basically how you can transfer this on here. So this T-square is horizontal, and it's horizontal in relation to this table. So as long as it's lined up like that, everything else on the paper should be lined up because the paper is lined up as well. So I can just draw a straight line, and this should be... 90 degrees with the paper. So like I said, I'm not going to go super in-depth with everything. This is just showing you how to make a basic blueprint. And you can use any measuring system you want. If you guys want more information about, you know, measurements and stuff like that, let me know in the comments and I will make a more in-depth video about how everything like that works. So, basically, you just use the dimensions that you marked on your sketch and you may even notice when you're doing that you might even change your mind about some of the dimensions for the finished drawing and what I'm doing is basically taking some of these measurements that you would put on a sketch and you know transferring it over here but basically it's a lot more neat and you're using straight edges and all the tools to do it so this is why I really like this tool you have the t-square and then you have a triangle. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, you know. You can say it any way you want, I guess, but this creates a vertical line. So this is horizontal and this is vertical in relation to this. So all you have to do is line it up with the little mark right there and now you have a vertical line. And you usually draw it longer because you're probably going to end up transferring it up here. So now you have this little piece right here, and this is how you would establish the basic angle. Now since we know that's an angle, we can just draw it straight down. 
So we know we want this long piece right there, and we already established which view we want to be the front view, so this would be considered the front view. So 2.100. So I really wish I could explain everything in this video, but some things are much more in-depth than others. So as you can see, this part right here obviously needs to be a little bit more thin because it needs to slide in this channel right here. So it needs to be a smaller dimension to slide in there like that. So it's a little bit smaller right there. It's actually 0 0.175, but you know, this is just showing you guys the basic concept. So just like that, just draw it all the way down. So there it is. After you finish doing that, you can just darken all of the lines that you need. After you darken the lines, it will start to look very familiar, as you can see. And this is literally the shape right here that you would cut out and glue onto a 16 layer piece of paper or something like that and cut it out. And that's this shape right here. It's that simple. That's what's really nice about working with paper because your blueprint is essentially the actual thing that you're making. So now to draw the top view, to actually transfer it up there, remember you take this, what's considered to be the front view, and you turn it up like that, and that's what it would be. Whatever this size is, you draw it the exact size, and whatever this would be, you draw it that exact size. There is no depth involved in an orthographic drawing. So that's what's nice about having those lines right there, is everything is already the correct length going, you know, this direction. So you can just draw another one here. And you may want to leave room if you're going to put dimensions on there or something like that. So you just follow the same steps, you know, look at all of your sketches and determine what size you want everything to be. So if you want the height to be a certain size, in this case it's 280 thousandths of an inch. You just mark it on there and draw the line over. And then you can just darken all of the necessary lines on here as well. So there really is no right way to do this. So as long as you know what it is, it doesn't really matter if you're just building it for your own personal use. If you guys would like to know more about this stuff, once again, let me know in the comments below and I will go in more detail with how all these dimensions and the views and stuff like that works. Now I don't really have CAD software, stuff that I can share blueprints with people and all that stuff, but you know, I still find a way to make it work, and if I have to do it old-fashioned way, then I'll do it. People have asked me before if I have ever taken an engineering class to learn this stuff, and yes I did. I actually took a few engineering classes in high school, but before I ever took those classes, I actually found an old technical design book, and I read it and learned a lot. I read the whole thing because it was interesting to me, and... I realized there was so much potential and so many things you could do with that knowledge. So I developed a basic understanding for all of this stuff and you can build on it from there. Anyway guys, I hope this at least helps you a little bit understand how blueprints can be made and you can figure things out like that and design a part. Remember this is just a basic video. I'm not really going into all of the dimensions and how I'm actually specifically transferring all these lines over and stuff like that. So that's really all there is to it. It's just a bunch of lines, orthographic sketches. I really recommend finding a technical design book or something like that. You can read through one of those in probably a week. Once again, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you sort of see a little bit of the process that goes on behind making a blueprint or something like that. And that also kind of shows why it takes me so long to make a blueprint because I want to make sure everything is going to work before I actually start building it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below or in a personal message. And be sure to subscribe if you would like to see the latest updates. And I will see you guys in the next video.